What's up guys? So a little over a month ago, NVIDIA sent me this Gigabyte Aero 15 OLED laptop for testing. Now this thing is over $2,000. It has an i9 eight core CPU, an RTX 2070, 16 gigs of DDR4 memory and super fast storage. It's probably the most expensive product that has ever been viewed on the channel. And honestly, I feel so unworthy even holding this. But this entire summer I had to edit all of my videos on a dual core laptop and somehow I made it work. So after using the RTX laptop, I wanted to try something similar to my experience over the summer, give you guys some tips and tricks on editing on a slower machine, and then do a very unfair, but still fun comparison between these two very different computers. Here is the $65 laptop that I recently bought with a dual core CPU. Let's see if it can edit 4K video. So what exactly can $65 get you? Not a lot. I browsed through a ton of classifieds and stumbled upon this ThinkPad T440S for 65 bucks on Leco. This particular model has some bangs and bruises, but it's sporting an i5 4300U with an HD 4400 Intel iGPU, eight gigs of DDR3 memory in single channel, and a 500 gigabyte SSHD. From my experience, this was the best model laptop that I could get without going for older, bulkier ThinkPad models. The speakers in the screen are fine, but oh my goodness, the trackpad is awful. Thankfully, whenever I edit on a laptop, I use an external mouse, so I was able to circumvent any headaches that the trackpad caused. The keyboard also has several missing keys, and the palm rest is discolored, but function over form, I suppose. Nonetheless, I didn't waste any time getting to business. I installed DaVinci Resolve 16, my main editing software, and I started the process. If you compare this to the RTX Studio laptop that I have, absolutely no competition. It has an i7-9980HK, 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, and even an RTX 2070 card with 500 gigs of Intel 760p storage. It's an absolutely gorgeous laptop with a beautiful 4K screen while remaining insanely thin and lap friendly thanks to NVIDIA's Max-Q technology. I'm sure many of you know, but the $65 laptop really doesn't stand a chance against the RTX Studio, which I knew going into this. I mean, the Studio laptop is even faster than my desktop in some instances. But that doesn't mean that the $65 poor boy isn't capable. Remember, size isn't everything. So most of my videos are in 1080p, either 30 or 60 frames per second, but I've wanted to move to 4K for a while. My fear, which is completely rational, was that this laptop would not be able to handle 4K. But after some optimizations, I was actually able to edit a full video with this laptop in 4K. First optimization on the list, get the CPU to actually run at its rated speed. It throttles. See, the core clock is only hitting about like 2.3 gigahertz maximum when it should be a 2.6 gigahertz all core boost. So the 4300U has a 2.6 core boost clock, but when I was rendering, I was lucky to get anything beyond 2.1. Now the iGPU has a similar story. It's rated for 1100 megahertz, but I was lucky for it to go over 600. Now this wasn't a temperature issue, but it was actually a power issue. Intel caps the CPU package power at 15 watts, so if you hit it, you throttle big time. My only option was to undervolt, and with the help and advice of a friend, I was able to undervolt the CPU by 0.08 volts and the integrated graphics by 0.03 volts using Intel's XTU program. My render speeds increased by an entire 30 seconds, which is a big deal for a laptop of this caliber, and temperatures were lower as well. Now, I still wasn't able to hit the rated 2.6 gigahertz all core boost clock, but I was at 2.45 on average, major improvement. With all of these optimizations, the $65 laptop can handle HD content well, so 1080p, 30 or 60 FPS, or lower. If I enable the proxy preview to a half, then I can watch a preview without too much stuttering or drop frames, even if I stack videos on top of each other, though I can get too crazy with that. A metric that I found useful while editing on such a cheap laptop was how many times DaVinci Resolve crashes during an editing session. So if I was editing HD, it would crash maybe once, maybe twice during a six hour session, perfectly fine. 4K is a whole nother beast. It has four times the number of pixels as 1080p, so I should prepare for the worst. If I edited lossless, uncompressed 4K files, DaVinci Resolve would crash. If I tried to proxy them, it would still crash, just not as quickly. Thankfully, there is a way to make it crash less often 
and to make things a bit smoother, and that's through optimizing my media. If you play video games, and I'm assuming you do if you're watching videos on this channel, then it's similar to changing your resolution scale. So when I optimize media, I don't actually edit 4K files, but downsampled versions, and it's perfect for cheap and slower laptops like this one. Just with timeline playback, you can see a big difference between the two. Optimized media files with a proxy will play a lot smoother, even though they are lower quality in the preview, than if you're using the original 4K file. Now drop frames and slower preview speeds and scrubbing is inevitable, but that's expected on a dual core laptop. If I limited myself to one or two video layers and things were doable, video transitions had to be super simple. I'm talking like cross fading maximum. And I couldn't go crazy with GP intensive tasks like color grading, video stabilization, or motion tracking. Otherwise I would get a GPU crash error and then Resolve would subsequently crash. If I got lucky and it didn't crash, I would end up with a black screen problem. Remember, this laptop only has two cores and four threads, so it will slow down and freeze even if I cough in the wrong direction. Worst part about this though wasn't even the processor, it's actually the video card. The integrated graphics are terribly slow and they lack dedicated VRAM, and so they have to borrow from the already small pool of system memory. I only have eight gigs on this laptop. Because of this, DaVinci Resolve had errors simply because there wasn't enough GPU memory to process a 4K video. See, I can handle slow editing, I can handle freezing here and there, but I think I counted about seven or eight crashes during my two and a half hour editing session on this laptop. Editing 4K video on this laptop is a five out of 10 at best, and I think that's generous. There are options to circumvent this, like using an older version that has lower requirements or using a completely new editor altogether, but I'm sure many of you know that switching to a lighter editor, well, first of all, finding a lighter editor is very difficult, and two, switching an editor and relearning the entire UI can be cumbersome. Unfortunately, proxies don't actually help with the rendering. It still has to be 4K at the end of the day, so it took over 30 minutes to edit a 35 second 4K video. I tried the same 4K editing experience on the RTX Studio laptop and oh my gosh, it was a world of difference. Editing on here was so much faster because one, I didn't have to wait for the media to actually load. And let me tell you, on the $65 ThinkPad, I was on edge a lot, frequently saving because I knew it could freeze or crash or restart at any moment. When it's all said and done, the RTX laptop performed better than even my desktop in certain scenarios, say if I was using optical flow or heavy color grading. And so Curiosity got the best of me. Both of these laptops can, I guess, technically edit 4K, even if you have to optimize some stuff and tweak some stuff. So what about 8K? So I downloaded raw 8K footage from Red's website, and I imported it into DaVinci Resolve on the dual core laptop, and it was struggle bus central, man. I tried changing the preview proxy to a quarter, which is the lowest that you can go, GPU processing error. I tried optimizing the media to 1 16th of its original size, so it's 1080p, GPU processing error. Even if I didn't drag the actual 8K content into the timeline, I got a GPU processing error. An interesting experiment would be maybe I could add an external video card to the laptop and then see if it can actually render an 8K video. Not even edit, just render. I think what I've learned the most here is that you should really use what you already have to create your vision. Even if your videos are only 720p, even if that's all you can render, even if that's all you can make, go for it. There's absolutely no reason not to. I've also learned that certain edits can also bring down the most powerful computers. There was one specific 1080p project that NVIDIA provided. It was called Speed Warp Example. And specifically because of the optical flow, my computer took almost 20 minutes to render a 30 second 1080p clip. It's been stuck on the high 60% for the last 12 minutes now and the estimation time just keeps on increasing. I also wanna say thank you to NVIDIA for actually investing into great encoding and decoding algorithms to help content creators. And I'm blessed to be chosen to have such a great laptop as this one. With that being said, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with a $65 laptop. I really just bought it for this video. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. I really wanna hear your thoughts on it. I could upgrade it. I could do so many different things. Maybe even try water cooling it just for the heck. 
just for the heck of it, or adding that external GPU that I mentioned earlier. So comment down below what you guys think. Uh, that's it for this video though. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, then leave a like. If you loved it, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Make sure you follow me on all kinds of social media, Twitter, Instagram, that's it, at HW, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.